Okay, I think we're ready to begin. Welcome everybody. Uh, thank you all for joining. This is streaming on Facebook Live, so I hope that we can share this widely. For those of you who, um, who have friends on Facebook but who are not participating on Zoom, you can go on to the Facebook pages of the San Francisco Consulate the, the, on Facebook and email them the link. So my name is Sarah Levin. And I am the executive director of Jemena, Jews Indigenous to the Middle East and North Africa. Jemena is a nonprofit organization based in San Francisco, California, that works to achieve universal recognition for the heritage and history of the 1 million Indigenous Jewish refugees from the Middle East and North Africa. Our programs aim to ensure that the accurate history of Mizrahi and Sephardic Jews is incorporated into mainstream Jewish and Middle Eastern narratives in order to create balance in attitudes, narratives, and discourse about Middle Eastern refugees and the modern Jewish experience. Today's program is part of Israel's day to commemorate and honor the 1 million Jewish refugees from the Middle East and North Africa. It has been such an honor for Jemena and for our community to play an integral role in bringing this initiative to the United States. And today is really exciting because it's the first time that we have a United West Coast event to celebrate Hanukkah, the Festival of, Festival of Lights, and the stories of the Jewish refugees from North Africa and the Middle East. So joining us today are representatives of Sephardic and Mizrahi communities in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, and of course, Israel. Without further ado, it is my honor to welcome Israeli Council General to the Pacific Northwest, Shlomi Kaufman, and Israel's Council for Public Diplomacy to the Pacific Southwest, Yonatan Barel. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Sarah. Good afternoon and happy Hanukkah to, to everyone joining us in the West Coast and across the United States. On behalf of the entire Consulate General our staff, uh, and our staff um, in, in San Francisco, I want to thank all our partner organizations who were so helpful in planning and spreading the word about this event and the message it carries. And thank you to Rabbi Simon ben Zaken, Rabbi Nathan Halevi for joining us for the Hanukkah candle lighting and offering some thoughtful words during the program. Special thanks to our sister consulate in Los Angeles who were partnering so many events and, and of course this time. A special thank goes to Jimena and to you, Sarah, and your leadership for organizing this event and, for, and, to, and that continue and your mission that continue to carry global, uh, globally the torch of educating on the story of one million Jews from nine Arab countries in Iran who were forced to flee lands, lands their ancestors lived in for over 2,500 years. Friends, we must remember the history and legacy of these rich and vibrant communities that were part of the social, economic, and cultural fabric of the lands. These ancient communities have helped to develop commerce, science, math, medicine, culture, languages, and arts for thousands of years across the Middle East. Let's also remember how and why in a very short time, these communities were expelled, most of the institutions were destroyed, and they had to flee. Although these communities were uprooted, the rich culture and heritage remain intact and continue to flourish today in Israel and beyond. The diversity and vibrancy of Israel today is tremendously influenced by Mizrahi communities and Mizrahi culture, which we are so proud of and celebrating together. We in Israel are committed to continuing to tell the story of the brutal expulsion of these communities and the tragic loss of lives and property. And now, I have to share with you that, that I'm honored to be joined today by Liras Charhi, an Israeli Persian actress and singer, as our keynote speaker. She's best known for her leading role in international Emmy winning series Tehran, which I loved and warmly recommend to watch. I'm looking forward to hearing from her and personal significance of the commemoration of Jews of Arab lands in November 30th. 30th. Thank you so much for taking the time and enjoy the program today.
Thank you. Uh, you hear me right, and so I'll just um, move right in. Thank you so much, Consul General Kaufman, for your wise uh, words and remarks. And shalom, everyone. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to thank our partners, the consulate uh, in San Francisco, of course, Jimena, and a lot of other organizations that are helping us spread this uh, important uh, event. Thank you to the rabbis who have joined us. And of course, our sp keynote speaker, Liraz, who is here with us, with her um, musician as well. We're very glad to have you with, her, with us today. It is uh, our honor to continue this wonderful tradition of commemorating the expulsion of Jews from Arab lands in Iran. It is so important for us to tell these untold stories because these stories must be told. First of all, is because recognizing rights for Jews uh, displayed from Arab countries is a call for historic truth and reconciliation. But also because if we really want to understand the Middle East and the current situation and any possible re um, resolution, we must be aware of the, and knowledgeable of the entire story of the reestablishment of the state of Israel. How under the Islamic rule, uh, Jews were considered second class citizens, how their life worsened during the 20th century. And now upon the declaration of the state of Israel's independence in 48, the status of uh, Jews in Arab countries became unbearable. Uh, they were persecuted, their rights were denied, they were abused to the point that they had to flee these countries. And by doing so, they usually or always uh, left their properties behind that were seized, confiscated without any compensation. The result is that from an estimated 1 million Jews in these countries at the beginning of the century, we are now left with less than 4,500 in Arab countries today. And uh, even though that there were more Jews that uh, displaced from Arab countries than Palestinians that uh, became refugees as a result of the, 20, of the 1948 war, still the United Nations predominant focus has been on Palestinians with hundreds of resolutions, dozens of UN, UN agencies and organizations and tens of billions of dollars invested, none of it toward the Jewish refugees. We have to remember it that there are two groups of refugees from, uh, from this conflict, not only for the historic justice, but also as uh, for any future resolution. We must remember that the model the Palestinians are promoting of eternal refugees is an abnormal model where you, uh, refugee status is passed down from generation to generation. We must remember there is another model, the, the Jewish model where Jewish refugees um, assimilated in Israel and other countries and became uh, um, part of the foundations of the reestablishment of the state and the, uh, the, the Jewish nation. And as Consul General uh, Kaufman uh, mentioned, we had a very special we have a spe very special guest with us today, um, and we are so thrilled to have Liraz with us today. And I'm sure that listening to her work, creation, and personal story will um, give us an insight of how much this origin, this background is important and is part, a core part of her identity, culture, and narrative, not only her hundreds of thousands of Jews that were, that were um, expelled and displaced. And till today, this is such an important part of the Israeli and Jewish society entirely. So we'll get a glimpse of that and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy our program. Happy Hanukkah, Chag Hanukkah Sameach, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Yonatan, and thank you, Shlomi. We are so lucky to have you as part of our West Coast Jewish communities, and we thank you for your commitment and dedication to ensuring that the issue of Jewish refugees and the rights of their Mizrahi and Sephardic descendants are recognized, honored, and included in your work here in the West Coast. So before we introduce Liraz, it's my pleasure to welcome Donna Maher, who is a dear friend to Jimena. Donna leads the YNS Nazarian Initiative at the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. This work uplifts the voices of the Iranian Jewish community and cre creates unique pathways for leadership. She holds an MBA from Tel Aviv University and is a first generation Iranian American. Donna is passionate about unifying diverse Jewish communities and helping young adults find meaning and connection in their Jewish and Mizrahi identities. So for this next portion, it would be helpful if you could add any questions into the chat box. I can't promise that we'll have time, but if we do, we'll certainly try to get to them. So thank you so much. Hi, Donna. 
Hi, Sarah. Thank you so much. I'm truly honored to be here on behalf of the Nazarian Initiative of the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles, and especially to introduce Liraz Charhi, um, who's an Israeli Iranian singer, songwriter, and actress. And she currently plays the role of Yael Kadosh on International Emmy Awards winning series Tehran. Liraz has been acting for close to 20 years and is known for her roles in French mini TV series Revivre. Hopefully, I pronounced that right and the films Fair Game and Elite Quartet. As a talented singer and songwriter, Liraz fuses modern Israeli music with the ethnic flavor of her Persian roots. Her last album, Zan, combines electronic, electro pop with Persian traditional tunes. And Liraz recently came back from tour in Europe and we're so excited to welcome her. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. Happy Hanukkah to everyone. We're here in Jaffa, in old Jaffa, in a beautiful gallery. And this is Gilad Levin next to me on the guitar. Um, I'm very, very excited about this beautiful evening, um, telling the story of my heritage. Um, be myself Iranian and Israeli at the same time and to tell my story. Uh, let's start for, for to, you know, do the first song. The first song we, uh, we, we're going to, to do for you is, uh, it's like the Iranian anthem called Gole Sangam. Um, it's about a flower who grow underneath the stone. And I think uh, the metaphor like Every Iranian metaphor in, in the language and in the Iranian culture speaks about that the flower is uh, actually a woman that wants to have her son, like her love, to hug her and to warm her. Gole <laughs> Sangam. Gole sangam, gole sangam, she began as the letangam, Miss Lafto, a gibar man, not to be sardamubirangam, gole sangam, gole sangam, she began as the letangam, Miss Lafto, a gibar man, not to be sardamubirangam. Hame oham, hame dardam, mesle tu fan for a gardam. Hame oham, hame dardam, mesle tu fan for a gardam. Bade mastam, ketu soro mi picham dor to mi gardam. Gole sangam, gole sangam, she began as the letangam. Let's love to a gibar man, not to be sardam, be random. Gole sangam, gole sangam, she began as the letangam. Let's love to a gibar man, not to be sardam, be Naslavaru la genavari, Khabaraz hola manadari, Dito par par mi sham doruze, Dele sange varot mi suze, Gole sangam, gole sangam, Chibegamaz, Dele tangam, sing with me. Gole sangam, gole sangam, Chibegamaz, Dele tangam. Wow, beautiful, beautiful, thank you. It's Definitely a classic and a, a beloved, well-known song in many Persian homes. I personally, I personally grew up listening to this as well, and your voice is just so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, I'm so excited to be sitting here in conversation with you. And I have to admit, this is especially personal to me just because I found out that um, your mother and my aunt actually were in school together in Tehran. And our grandmothers uh, were in the same community and synagogue in, in Israel when they made Aliyah. So <laughs> this is crazy because, you know, it's like a big whole family. We all know each other from 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 the past. It's beautiful. Absolutely. I think it, it's it's a true sentiment to the to the Mizrahi, you know, what makes the Mizrahi culture and heritage so beautiful. We, we really are like a family. Um, and, you know, we're here to, to talk about these stories of, of the Mizrahi community and honor these voices and, and, and the people who were displaced. So I, we'd love to hear, Liraz, tell us about your family's story and what it was like growing up in Israel and a Mizrahi family and your connection to the Jewish refugee story. So uh, my both parents arrived from Tehran to Israel when they were teenagers. It was back in the 70s. Um, just before the revolution. And I grew up to both parents who actually were very young and made us, uh, you know, made the family. And I felt that I'm growing up with very, very Iranian um, parents in a very, very, very free country. So I felt that at home, I had to be like this good girl, obeying girl, Iranian girl with all this Nas. I know what I know that you know what I'm speaking about. The Nas is like this Iranian coquettish behavior of being a good girl. But outside, I felt that I am the wild, free spirit artist who wants to break every wall and to sing and to dance and to act. And I felt like I had you know, double heritage. From one hand, I was Israeli, and from the, from the other hand, I was very Iranian. And it, it felt a little bit confusing when I was a little child. When I grew up, I understood that I needed to pick some side because it's difficult for me to you know, cross the street from home to school and change, switch this on identities so fast. So, I actually was very shy about my heritage and I put it aside and I became like a very Israeli teenager. But as much as I grew, uh, I felt that I need to connect my roots because I wanted to know where I came from. And I had a big dream to, to be an artist. And I think for artists and for people, same, they need to dig in and explore their heritage just to know who, who are they and where they came from and to build themselves as a people, human being in this world. So for, for a very, very uh, tough, long years, I had this big hole in my heart asking, who the hell am I? And I needed to choose each time some side. But when I understood that I don't uh, need to choose any side and I built with so many beautiful layers, um, the hole got you know, little and little, and um, I became uh, the free artist I am today. That's so beautiful and so relatable, right? I mean, I think there's so much richness to Mizrahi culture, and it's so, you know, so much power to it. And as many of us are first generation, second generation, third generations, right? Um, there is this constant struggle between the identities, right? Um, I know I personally experienced it. And in my role leading the Nazarene Initiative of the Jewish Federation, I speak to a lot of young adults who are also experiencing the same thing. So I'm curious um, to you, you know, what is it about your Mizrahi heritage that, that you're drawn to? What is it that you love? You know, is there a specific ritual, a food? Um, is it a value? You know, what is, it, what, is it, what is it drawing you to that? So many good things. Um, I think, the the most um, you know simple things uh, like uh, be at home at Friday night and respect yourself and the other and your family and uh, you know trying to cook like my mother her food I was very curious about the Iranian culture I heard so many beautiful stories about Iran the culture the food the views the weather the people the cinema the theater 
I was very curious to know what would happen if I if I grew up there. Um, would I able would I would I be able to be who am I today? So I kind of digged in my mother's and father's stories, but at some point, you know, they did not have anything else to tell me. And I opened the television and I see, you know, Ahmadinejad and scary things about politics with Israeli and with Israel and, and Iran. So as much as the politics and everything got worse, I stick to my parents' stories and to cook with them and to eat with them and to to have the holidays with them. Uh, I must say that I have today two daughters, so I'm bringing them every day, my parents and my Iranian heritage. I can tell you about, you know, books, poetry, cinema, um, of course, food, but I can actually describe, you know, the Iranian Lalazar Bazaar, how to walk there and what was the food and the smell. I can actually uh, sense lots of, um, um, you know, experiences that my parents had. So I'm very happy that I'm full of, you know, uh, good, good, good uh, stuff from Iran that my parents brought to me. That's so lovely. And I, and it's actually very inspiring. I think, right, like what I'm hearing you say is that there's a curiosity there. There was a curiosity there to learn more about where your, your family came from. And I think in today's world, both in, in America, right, and also even in Israel, we're, we're trying to fit in. We're trying to, you know, the, the community yeah. tends to assimilate. And I think that's a beautiful message to be curious, to ask the questions of our parents. Please. And I think sorry as much as my parents tried to be and to and they struggled to be israelis as much as i saw them drifting away from being the iranian you know uh people that they are as much as i saw that and felt it i i wanted to grab more from iran i mm -hmm. wanted to know more i wanted to know where i came from because I could not visit Iran. We all cannot visit Iran from, you know, people from Israel. So it was, you know, crazy for me to understand that I cannot ask them, hey, take me to your, uh, to your, to your childhood neighborhood, take me to the bazaar. I mean, I think this whole started when I understood that my parents are missing Iran so much. So they are drifting away from Iran. And as much as I felt it, I sensed it, I wanted more. That's beautiful, beautiful. Um, you know, uh, most, uh, most Iranian Jews either ended up in Israel like you or in Los Angeles like me. And um, we have the largest population um, of Persian Jews in the world. And I know you spent some time here in LA as well. I mean, how is, you know, how is that community here in LA similar or different to the Persian Jewish community in Israel? And, um, you know, what was your experience like here? LA is a, it's a breaking point in my life. Um, I uh, participated in a film called Turn Left at the End of the World. It was my first film, actually. It was Avi Nesher's film. And I was invited to a film festival in Los Angeles. So I went with my friends to, to a couple of days in Los Angeles. It was the first time. And my mom, she gave me a note with the number of her cousin. And she said, you can call her. She'll, she will invite you to dinner, Shabbat dinner. And I said, ah, I don't know, mom. I don't have time. I'm going to a festival. I, I want to go to Hollywood. I want to go to... Universal Studio, and I was, I was very naive about this place, uh, and very young. So, I went to Los Angeles, and when I arrived to the hotel, I got a voice message from my aunt, my my mother's cousin. She, she said, "You are invited." And I said, "Oh God, I'm going to meet her. I just can't believe these Persian people were with a thick accent. I mean." enough, uh, we're Israeli, okay, we're not Iranian. And I was like sticking to this. So it was it was the night of the screening and from this screening, I got my first, uh, I'm telling you the story, uh, make it short. I got my first agent and manager in Los Angeles who took me to agencies and I started to work in Los Angeles and to film there. But 
the crazy thing that happened is that I met my family for the first time, my Iranian family, and I literally fell in love with them. I cannot describe the feeling that I have in my heart for them. From day one, I, I understood that this is the family from Iran that I'm missing because in Israel, it's my family. I don't know any other family from Iran and they were from Iran and they arrived to Los Angeles and they're very, very Iranian with a thick accent. And my cousins are actually behaving with this Nas Kardashian behavior. They speak with a thick accent and they're American, but they're so Iranian. And I flipped because they took me to the streets in Los Angeles. And I saw so, for the first time I saw so many Iranian people, I realized that there are literally million Iranian people living in Teher Angeles. I could not believe like, this is Iran for me. This is Tehran. And I digged in in very beautiful music shops and I collected lots of vinyls and CDs of the music of the psychedelic pop 70s. And I fell in love with this music because I did not know any, any kind of music like that. And then when I was running from additions to additions, I understood that I need to sing and I need to sing in Farsi and I need to change my life and I have a story to tell and I need to explore my heritage and I need to thank my grandmothers who were muted for most of their lives and they gave me the courage and the opportunity to sing because I'm free. And then I had a lot of research about, research about women in Iran after the revolution. And what I realized that Iranian women are not able to sing since the revolution for the last 43 years, I, I flipped. I said, okay, I have to be the pipe to tell this story out. I'm Israeli Iranian based in Israel in a free country. I can sing, but there they cannot sing. So this, is, this, this was the breaking point. I understood that I need to sing in Farsi for the first time. And I flipped and thank God for that. Wow, that's so beautiful. And you know, on the note of your 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 music, um, your last album, Zen, which means women in, in Persian, um, it was a great hit and it came out, you know, last year when many of us were in quarantine. I I personally really enjoyed the tunes um, yeah. during that time. And you know, it's it's rumor has it, right? There was a secret collaboration among Iranians. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that and, and, and what that experience yeah. was like for you? So in Los Angeles, I understood that I need to tell the story of my family and I need to sing in Farsi. I got back home and my family, my friend, my manager, all the team that I've been working with told me that I'm crazy. And I said, I'm, I'm going for it. So I released Naz. It was my first Iranian album. And Naz... Uh, was actually uh, played in lots of uh, underground party scenes of women in Tehran. And I got lots of videos of people dancing to my music in Tehran. And I get very enthusiastic about it, of course. So it was actually my first dream that's coming true to sing for these women because I sing because of them. And my next step of, of my, my, my next chapter was dreaming about writing uh, an album with the Iranian musicians based in Iran. And this is the album you've been talking about that I released last November during COVID time. It was an underground secretly recorded album that, that has been recorded with lots of fear and anxious uh, and, 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 and happiness and lots of big dramatic Iranian emotions that surrounded us and got from our hearts outside. Uh, it was really scary to record this album, but we still uh, believe even after we released it, that this, this was the, the most empowering um, and uh, crazy uh, idea that we, we made it uh, come true. So uh, 
this album was out and I can say that today after I think we had lots of tours even before the COVID and after the COVID that people are looking to listen to Iranian music. They are very curious about it. And especially when it comes from this collaboration of Iranian and, and uh, Israeli musicians that are not afraid to tell those stories, that the story is very simple. We just need love and we speak about love. And we have lots of love between these two extreme dramatic countries. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I mean, we'd love to hear a song from this album. Yes. So next song is actually arrived to my ears and to my heart from Tehran. Uh, it's called Mastam. And the writer who gave me this beautiful song was actually really afraid at some point. So he took it back. He took it back and I convinced him to let me sing this song. It's called Mastam, it's I'm drunk out of love. <laughs> غیر من واسه تو میخونه کیه مستم از بویدنه اطرتنه هر جو که باشم تو چشمای منی به از راز دلت ماه دلم تو گو بگو که دنیای منی من هوایی شدم از بوی تنه اطر تو دلیل دیگونگی منه اون که از حالا هوای عاشقی غیر من واسه تو میخونه کیه غیر من واسه تو میخونه کیه مست من روی دمه اطر تنه هر جو که باشم تو چشمای منی بگو از راز دلت ماه دلم تو تو بگو که دنیای منی لا 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 אשר את גשת במאור ומדע, דרחוב אויה המאירי רונע, רנגית ששמו נתן הזמן רובוד, אריה זיו אויה מנדי רונע, אשר את גשת במאור ומדע, נאז קום סח מדלם בי טוביה
Mashallah, as we say in in Thank you, That was so beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Um, we're we're running short on time, so I do want to you know take a moment to also congratulate you on Tehran, the you know winning you. An international Emmy Award for best drama, Mazal Tov. Yeah, thank you. So Best exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, were there, can you share with us, have there, were there any significant or touching moments for you uh, filming this show that really, in lots of ways, captures all your identities? Yes, um, of course. I play Diel Kadosh. She's a Mossad agent. She's Iranian who moved to Israel. And she, she as well has her both characters, the Iranian is, is the Israeli, and she needs to, to, to choose side every time when she does something uh, important. I don't want to spoiler anyone the, the show because maybe someone did not watch it yet. Please run and just watch this beautiful show. Um, but she chooses some sides at some point because she has lots of conscience and lots of memories and lots of things to figure out with herself. For me, I can say that I could really recognize to, to this role, especially about the, the confusing situation about, you know, finding my own uh, character. And I must say that it was very empowering to work with Iranian artists from all over the world. Some of them left Iran, you know, five months, eight months before they, they shoot uh, Tehran. And they really, really choose sides when they actually uh, agreed to participate in uh, Israeli television TV series because they knew they, are not, they, are not, they will not be able to get inside uh, Iran again after they they've been working with Israeli uh, production and artists. So we actually felt like a big whole family from everywhere around the world, but we had the same Iranian heart. I remember one great uh, situation when, when it was very, very cold. So we, we cuddled in some room next to a, um, I don't know, like a, um, a like a stove, yeah, like a stove. And I started to sing uh, Iranian song. I sang Mahtab and we all started singing together. And I said, ah, oh, there is a God that watched this scene now. And one day we're going to share this scene in Israel and in Iran and everywhere at the same time with no fear. Um, so I really, really enjoyed shooting uh, uh, Tehran and playing Yael Kadosh. And I felt like it's my own personal story and character. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Um, we're just gonna take one question actually from an audience member. This is from Leah or Lea from Sacramento. Um, she's, she says that we know that 50% of Israeli Jews are known as Jews of color, mostly from the Middle East, North, North Africa and Ethiopia. How would you describe their culture and everyday life in Israel, the food, the fashion, and what are some of the best examples that come to your mind? I, I think this is such a great question because Israel is such a melting pot for all the, the traditions from uh, the, the, the diverse traditions and rituals from you know, the beauty of, of the yeah. diversity in our Jewish experience. So please. Exactly, there's so many answers for me to give you, but I can say that the most um, you know, um, important things of being Israeli and Iranian at the same time, growing up here in Israel, is that you know, we have so many layers and sometimes we think it's, it's a mix of cultures and it's crazy to understand how many layers we, we are built off. But I can say for myself that the moment I did not excuse myself and said, you have to choose side, you have to describe, I cannot describe you. I can, I cannot, I mean, I can't really, we can't really describe how crazy is it to be with so many cultures. Um, next to Miguelad, his parents are from Morocco and from Poland. And, you know, we have so many cultures here. So I think I'm half Moroccan, half Iranian. 
know, I'm so many, I'm like, it's changed. The minute you sit in an Ethiopian restaurant or Yemeni restaurant, you feel at home because Israel is the home of so many great cultures and people. Absolutely. And has there been, I know I said that was the last question, but I have to ask, please. <laughs> was there um, a figure in your life who really had a profound impact on you? Of course. Um, when I understood that um, Iranian women are not able to do this one simple, pure thing, and it's to sing, I took it really hard because, you know, I grew up in a very nice home, but I was muted myself in some way because I'm a good Iranian girl and my mother and her sisters and my grandmothers, they needed to break each time uh, in their life, their, their own wall, you know, and I felt I need to break lots of walls to become an artist, a woman, a mother. And I followed a very, very unique idol singer, Iranian singer called Gugush. And her story is actually outstanding because she was at the top of her career when the um, Islamic uh, revolution just happened. Uh, and she, she was really at the top, top, top artist in, in, in Iran. And she stopped singing for almost 21 years. She's telling her story that she sat on a couch for 21 years, just went to the grocery and back home, groceries and back home. And she understood that she doesn't have even a place to speak up and to raise her voice. Not, not saying to sing, just to, to say, hello, I'm an artist, I was here, I'm a woman, let me do what I'm doing the best. So she actually left Iran and she moved to the US. And of course you all know her, she's amazing and she's still kicking and she's amazing. And she's my idol. And in my show, um, we're playing one of her songs called Man Omadam. And I chose the song because of her beauty and her voice and the lyrics saying, I'm here, I am alive. At any point in woman's life, she can arrive, she can appear, she can have the courage to continue no matter what she, she has been through. Uh, and each wall she's breaking, she can break it again, and another, another wall, and another wall. I mean, we are very, very courageous, and I'm supporting every woman in the world, especially women in Iran that are muted. And I sing for them, and I sing because of Gugush, and she's my inspiration. Can we play one of her songs? Please, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Time? Okay. So let's hear Man Omadeam. I'm here. <laughs> so in my shows I'm doing the dance. I cannot hear you and see you guys, but please dance like no one's watching you at your living room, at your offices, no matter where you are, just be with us and sing and dance. Man omade on boy boy man omade yes for you Man omadam kinam boniyot kunam Man omadam Man omadam kish faryot kunam Man omadam kinam boniyot kunam Man omadam vay das Hey, the Brahman, a low he so sole shavi. Hey, the Brahman, a low he so sole shavi. Hey, the Brahman, a low he so sole shavi. There are no man, the shoes be on so shavi. Man, oh, madam, boy, boy, man, oh, madam, yes, for your conan. Man, oh, madam, cannot money on the conan. Man, oh, madam, man, oh, madam, yes, for your conan. Man, oh, madam, cannot 
Thank you so, so, so much. That was so beautiful. Thank you, Liraz, for inspiring us today and sharing your story with us. And just thank you for all that you do for our, our world, you know, representing oh. Mizrahi voices and really being an ambassador for Iranian Israeli Jewry. Um, so thank you so much. And happy Hanukkah. We'll pass it. Happy Hanukkah, out. everyone. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's a time for miracles, so I'm sending you from here, from Jaffa, Israel, all my love, and have lots of miracles this Panukkah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Passing, passing it to Sarah. Thank you so much, Leraz. That was so beautiful. This is such a special program. Thank you, Dana, as well. So this gathering would not be complete if we ignored that tonight we will welcome the fifth night of Hanukkah. So joining us is Rabbi Shimon ben Zaken and Rabbi Natan Halevi, who will lead a short ceremony to conclude this program. Rabbi ben Zaken is an accomplished Dayan, Rabbi Mohel Sofer Shochet Chazan, an artist who currently serves Sephardic communities in San Francisco at the Magen David Sephardic Congregation and in Seattle in Congregation Ezra Basaroth. Rabbi Ben Zaken was born in the Spanish Moroccan coastal city of Melia and received his rabbinic ordination from the Rabbinic Academy of Marseille in France. In 1984, he became the rabbi of the Sephardic Bikur Holim congregation in Seattle. And since then, he has been an integral leader of Jewish communities in San Francisco, all the way up into the Pacific Northwest. Rabbi Ben Zaken, I will really never forget hearing one of your Yom Kippur sermons at Megan David, and I just want to thank you for your commitment to continue serving our community here in San Francisco. We need you, and we're so lucky to have you. Rabbi Ben Zaken will be joined by Rabbi Natan Halevi, who currently serves as the rabbi of the Kahal Joseph congregation in Los Angeles. Um, as the child of Iraqi Jewish parents, Rabbi Halevi carries tremendous pride for his heritage and in 2005 received his rabbinical ordination at Yeshiva Tomchei Tzmeimim in Israel and he returned to LA in 2008 to lead the community that helped raise him. Rabbi Halevi loves studying all facets of Torah and other modalities and philosophies that he feels may support Jewish people in this modern day and age. So I'm going to turn it over to both of you now. Thank you both for joining. Thank you. Let me see here. Okay. okay uh, if I may, we are going to be uh, um, saying the blessing that we usually say when we are going to light the menorah, the menorah that we light, it's four, four candles or four lights and the Hanukkiah. And uh, of course, in Israel, where Iraz is now, that is five candles. 
but we are still here. So we are going to uh, say the blessing, but we're not going to say God's name as it usually we say. And uh, because if not, it wouldn't be proper, but we are going to uh, um, <clears throat> do usually we sing um, Mao Tsur that we are going, it's going to be there in the screen as well. Once we say the Brachot, okay? So um, let me, I just have a clear now. Baruch atah amunai, elokenu melech haolam, asher kidashanu emitzvotav, vetzivanu yad ikner hanukah. Baruch atah amunai, elokenu melech haolam, sheasani simla avotenu, בימים ההם, בזמן הזה. הנרות הללו אנו מדליקים על הניסים ועל הפורקן ועל הגבורות ועל התשועות ועל הנפלאות ועל הנחמות שעשית לאבותינו בימים ההם בזמן הזה על ידי כהניך הקדושים כל שמונת ימי חנוכה, הנרות הללו קודשם, ולנו רשות להשתמש בהם, אלא לראותם בלבד, כדי להודות לשמך, הניסיך והנפלאותיך, ועל ישועותיך. מה עוד שוב? Mao Tzur Yeshuati Lepanae Lechapeleach Tikon Bet Tepilati Lechapeleach If I may, I'd like to say a few words. First of all, I uh, would like to uh, acknowledge everybody who is uh, um, participating, the Israeli Consul General in Los Angeles, Hillel Newman, and the Israeli Consul in San Francisco, Shlomi Kaufman, and Consul, Consul Jonathan Barrell, and Sarah Levine, that um, it's always nice to participate with you 
she's the executive director of Jimena and the keynote speaker, Liraz Sharhi, who I, uh, I really love listening to, and she's really a master with, uh, with her voice, and uh, Donna Maher of the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. Now, the untold story of the Jewish refugees from Ireland and Iran, the, I know that the purpose of this event is to hear the stories and honor the communities who were displaced from their country of origin, as so well was expressed by Livraz. I believe that it is very important that we honor the memory of the Jewish refugees from Arab land and Iran, because it is the Middle East and North Africa and the Mizrahi and Sephardi descendant who are now taking their place and making contribution to our beloved Eres Israel and also in the lands of their dispersion, wherever they happen to be, by remembering and honoring our Sephardic Mizrahi and Iranian ancestor, we bring honor to their descendants. Habe Hatalia, as they say in the Talmud, one depends on the other because their sacrifice and their perseverance in struggling and planning a future for their descendants in spite of persecution, forced expulsion, and the estimated, nobody mentioned that the 350 billions of Jewish property that was destroyed or seized during those years by their host in the Arab lands and Iran. And in spite of everything, they succeeded. And we owe them at least a debt of gratitude in memory. And that is why I appreciate, as we all should appreciate, the fact that we have the organization Jimena, the Jewish indigenous to the Middle East and North Africa. And uh, I believe perhaps now you will have to call it Jimenai, you know, because you are now talking about Iran as well. We have planned the Mizrahi commemoration program in partnership with the Israel diplomatic mission to Los Angeles and the Pacific Northwest region the Israeli consulate in San Francisco and the Israeli consulate in Los Angeles, which include both San Francisco and Seattle, Washington, both my communities, which I love and I appreciate. I believe that one of the lessons that Hanukkah emphasized that even during the darkest time, we as Jews always concentrate in the light that is left. There is growth and renewal beneath the surface. Our enemies, may outnumber us and uh, our natural resources may be few, but the Jewish people always defy the odds with the real natural resources that God implanted in us in a miraculous way. Many Jews still alive were witnesses to the darkest moment in all of Jewish history. So let us pray that the light of Hanukkah dispels the areas of human darkness leading the world to the peace he so desperate, desperately needs. And I have to say, I'm very excited about the Abrahamic Accord between Israel and the United Arab Emirates and all the other signatories who pluck the courage to be part of such initiative and may it continue and prosper to the day when we shall really know real peace. Thank you. Chazaku Baruch Rabbi. Chazak Baruch Rabbi Ben Zaken, beautiful. Also, I wanted to second uh, and thank the consulate and Jimena and everyone else who organized and participated in Liran. Beautiful. I really related with a lot of what you said. Growing up in, in Los Angeles was kind of confusing as the son of Iraqi Israeli parents, and I needed to find my way. But I think we get there. Um, I am very proud of my, my Jewish Iraqi heritage. And one of the greatest things about this heritage is the, the lessons I learned from my ancestors who grew up in Iraq. And this really enabled me to soak up this Iraqi Jewish cultures. And I felt, you know, they were truly humble and unassuming, yet at the same time, very wise and insightful. And this was a really great model for me growing up in Los Angeles. And I tried to, to emulate their noble manner. I really deeply appreciated the love from these ancestors, my parents and my grandparents and great and grand uncles, which was communi communicated through words, but
but also mainly through their actions, because really we, we express ourselves through our behavior. And I think that's all of us as Jews. We all know that the Jews were exiled to Babylon in 597 BCE, which makes Babylon one of the oldest Jewish communities in the world. And as the origin of the Babylonian Talmud, the influence of this region is still felt in the Jewish world to this very day. The Jews of Iraq were very integrated people as Jews and as members of the Iraqi general community. They were deeply involved in all facets of, of the Iraqi community and life. And they also had a deep reverence for Torah and the mystical, mystical parts of the Torah, the Kabbalah. On my, my grandparents from my father's side were holistic healers who healed all people, Jews and non-Jews alike, without discrimination and for free whenever needed. And on my mother's side, my grandparents were the caretakers for the grave of Ezra Sofer in Al-Uzer. Uh, with the unfortunate rise of Nazism, things got worse in Iraq, as we know from the Farhud, which took place in 1941 during the holiday of Shavuot. The great love and passion for Israel burned in the Iraqi Jews, and the family of my father and mother were in the early wave of immigrants to Israel in 1949. And we all know life in Israel was very difficult, Yet the Iraqi Jews added a lot to the founding of Israel with their innovation, wisdom, and care. And I think we as all Jews continue to do our best to be upstanding citizens and Jews wherever our path leads us. And I hope Hashem blesses us all and all of you on this wonderful Hanukkah and Chag Sameach. And thank you for making me a part of this wonderful event. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you both so much. Uh, thank you, Rabbi Ben Zaken and Rabbi Alevi, and happy Hanukkah to everyone. So this concludes our program for today. And again, I wanna give a special thanks to the Consulate General of Israel in San Francisco and the Consulate General of Israel in Los Angeles for this great program. Thank you, Leah Raz and Donna, and thank you to all of our co-sponsors. Jemena, from the bottom of our hearts, we send each of you a Hag Sameach, happy Hanukkah. And next year, God willing, we can do this in person. We can celebrate the holiday together and we can honor Jews, Jewish refugees together. So thank you, everybody. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.